Let's take a look at oversampling. So you've probably seen this before. You have a car in a video and the wheel is kind of all over the place, spinning backwards and forwards and changing direction and speed. This is happening because the camera is taking a limited amount of pictures at a certain frame rate, which is simply too slow to accurately reproduce the fast frequency of the spinning wheel. And in professional audio, we actually have a very similar situation because we are working with a fixed sample rate, which can at a maximum accurately describe a frequency of half the sample rate. So if we are working at a sample rate of 48K, for example, we can handle audio frequencies ranging up to 24K, which should be more than enough because humans can only hear up to 20K anyway. But there is a twist. In some production stages, we're actually creating frequencies much higher than the sample rate can handle. And those stages are usually things like limiting, clipping, compression with very fast attack and release times, and sometimes even distortion or wave shaping. So basically anything that's changing our audio waveform in a super short amount of time can create these crazy high frequencies. And just like in our video example with a car, frequencies which are just too high to be handled by our sample rate will be misinterpreted as other unwanted frequencies which then show up in our music. And this phenomenon is called aliasing and there are a few approaches that you can use to prevent aliasing from happening. One of them would obviously be to use a super high sample rate, but there are some downsides to that. So why not tackle the problem exactly where it's being created? And that's where oversampling comes in. Oversampling increases the sample rate for just the exact processing stage that you need it for, in order to correctly identify very high frequencies and then filter them out. This is why you usually find this option in limiters, clippers, compressors, so you have this option exactly inside of those tools that might actually create these high frequencies. And usually oversampling works in multiples of your actual sample rate, so in your tools you will see a times two, times four, or something like that. And the higher you go, the more aliasing will be prevented, but also the more CPU is going to be used. To finish things off, I should say that the impact of aliasing and oversampling is kind of small, and you can make amazing music without worrying about oversampling or anything like that once. So unless you want to become an audio engineer, I would say you don't have to spend too much time and headspace on this topic, but since it does come up here and there in our production process, why not know at least a little bit about it? So as a rule of thumb, if you're producing and mixing, and you have some super fast compression or limiting happening, and your computer can spare a little bit of extra CPU, why not? use some oversampling to be safe. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Have a good one.